The next talk is going to be about Nick's Bitcoin. Let's welcome Joao. Hello, everyone. And I'm Joao. I will talk today about Nick's Bitcoin. And here is the agenda. It's a small presentation. In the beginning, I will talk about what is Nick's Bitcoin and why Nick's Bitcoin instead of other alternatives. And I will show some examples. And for the last, I will show how is the community. And here, and talking about me, I am an Elixir developer, and I'm working since 2018 with Elixir. And Nix, I'm using in my MacBook. I have a Nix OS, and I run Nix Bitcoin. And I'm using Nix for almost one year. And I am Brazilian. It's my first time outside Brazil. And So here, let's see what is Nix Bitcoin. It's a collection of Nix packages and modules to easily run a Bitcoin node and in a practical way and in a security way. There are some security standards that you can have with importing some modules. Yeah. And Nix Bitcoin can be used to run a Bitcoin node, a Lightning Network node, and other uh, applications that require a Bitcoin node. And you can connect a hardware wallet on that. You can connect a mobile wallet. Or if you have a, if you have a store, you can connect your store wallet on the Bitcoin node. You can run a backend application connect to that node. And here is a right run Bitcoin node using Nix Bitcoin because we have some other alternatives outside Nix. And the first one for me is the Nix OS. Uh, I think here everyone has an idea about ah, why, why to run using Nix OS or Nix. Uh, I think the main reason is reproducibility. And, uh, it's, and the second one is related to the first you have your Bitcoin node as a file, so you can put on GitHub, you can share that file, you can create other nodes. For example, I have 10 computers, you can copy that file to their computers. It's very practical instead of entering each computer. And about security, since you uh, set up the security one time, you don't need to do it on every machine. If you are using other way, you need to uh, set up each, uh, each time. And the Nix Bitcoin have the crops. It crops is a tool to deploy uh, from a computer to another. So I use my computer to build the application, and it deploys to my server. And it's very useful because, for example, I cannot run NixOS on my macOS, only using a VM. So I run natively the crops to build. And you can have Tor. Uh, you can import a module to have Tor. And uh, you can use Duase. It's an alternative to sudo with some securities in mind. And you can have them to an operator. is a non-root user. Uh, that you can use to interact with services. You don't need to enter sudo to do some operations. So you have more security about that. And you can import in hardened kernel. It's a way to have a, a Linux kernel more safe, but it's more unstable and you lose like the half of performance. So I usually don't use a hardened kernel. It's something that I, I want to learn more. Maybe for if you want more security, it's a good, it's a good way. And uh, I will show some examples here. And the principal example is the nixbitcoin.org. is from the the principal project. They have a website, and at that website, there's the source code is linked here, and it's deployed and using ZFS on a headset online. And it have a lot of features and services running there. Uh, for example, Bitcoin and Lightning, 
BTC Pay Server. BTC Pay Server is a tool to receive Bitcoin. For example, if you have a store or want to receive a donation. And in the source code, I have all code related to how to deploy it, how to set up the disks and everything. And there is a mempool, a public mempool. A mempool is a Bitcoin explorer. So they have one you can enter, you can use the lightning that they have. And I think it's that for that example. And the another example is a machine that I have, is a mini PC, is a B-Link, is very affordable. And I set up that using a uh, NixOS Infect uh, because I think it's more simple if you have a simple case. And I installed Ubuntu and using NixOS Infect with one command, I changed it to NixOS. And tomorrow there's a presentation about NixOS, so it's a small spoiler. And I am using Tailscale to connect to that computer. And uh, here there are some configurations. And I will do a live uh, configuration enabling the mempool. Uh, mempool is that website that you can saw every block and saw every transaction that happened on Bitcoin. And uh, I, I will do it using Tailscale. And let's go. Uh, and here is a QR code to the link that will be exposed at the Tor uh, network. But the link will be on the GitHub uh, code. So I think there maybe it's easier to open. And a, a cool thing is that th this link is static, is reproducible. So if I disable and, and enable it again, it's the same link. OK, uh, let's go for the live configuration. So here is my repo. And I have uh, some files. The principal is the hardware configuration. No, the principal is configuration. And hardware configuration, uh, I will show you what I have there. So in the beginning, I had this SSD, but it was only 500 gigabytes. So I cannot store my, the entire Bitcoin data. Today is like 600 or 700. And it will increase with the time. So I bought a new SSD, and with my system uh, running, I okay, turn off and plug the SSD, and I'm using this hardware configuration to format my new SSD. And now I will show the principal configuration. All right. So here I import the secure, secure node. It will, use, it will run Bitcoin using Tor. And uh, for example, I can comment that this line and here enable Bitcoin ND like this. And true. And put a Tor here, but it's doing that. Here I'm importing the hardware. And here I'm using the, my new SSD. And I already have the mempool enabled, but it's the backend mempool. So there is no website. It's only working on my local network. And I can show it here. Uh, now I, I enter in my computer. Okay. If I run the command node info, I have some infos about my Bitcoin node. So I have mempool here. And I have mempool front end but it's only accessible on this computer, like in Brazil. I cannot access it here. Even with the tail scale, I need to add a new configuration to it be exposed to internet. And so now we are going to enable the uh, mempool front end as an example to show how it's simple. And the code is here. Save it, and now I need to run the deploy command. It is on my Nix shell, so I need to run Nix shell first. 
command deploy. So now it will build on my machine, and when it finishes the build, it will uh, send the code, the build, for the remote server and apply the chains. And it takes a, a time, like one minute, more or less, but if I run system CTL, okay, CTL is already running. But for now, I only have the local address, and when the build and deploy finish, I will have a new address here. And for example, if I want to disable the mempool, and I can go here, I go to the configuration, and I can comment this line, and after that I, I will not have the mempool here, and it will be removed from the system CTL. Okay, now it's running. Yeah, it, it was already running, now I, I only enabling the Tor. So okay, it finished. Now if I run node info, okay, now I have my only address here, and let's verify if it's working. Oh, okay. Someone is working for someone. Maybe here I having some trouble with the tour. Okay, it opened it. So now it's working. Uh, let's go ahead. And the next slide is how to expose to internet. If you copy this code, here is the port six zero eight four five, and I can show. What is that port? Is that port here? And it will expose to internet so everyone can access uh, outside Tor. And, but uh, there are some security that you need be, to be concerned because uh, mempool have some configurations. For, if you want to expose to internet, you need to add some configurations to prevent some issues. I don't think it's a big issue, but if you want to go seriously, I think you, you need to, to look at this other configuration. But it's very nice if you want to expose some service. You don't need to be mempool. You can expose any other service that have a local address here. Yeah. And I, here is the GitHub link for this code. And I have some future plans for my server. Is one is edge monitoring, other uh, one is add CI CD for deploy. So I would like to have uh, someone can open a pull request and I can review and I will merge and it will be deployed to my server. Uh, I think it's very nice if you have a company and you want to run a Bitcoin node, you can have uh, coworkers that can review and can apply that change. I want to create a website similar to the nixbitcoin.org using Nix to learn more about Nix in general and link to the links of my server. And I want to create more documentation about my experience. Uh, I, I did that presentation in Brazil. It took like one hour because I, I talked about Nix and NixOS to everyone and I showed how to use NixOS in fact. And that is it, and for the last is, uh, this is the community, they are very kind, I asked a lot there, and they helped a lot, and uh, that is it for today. Thank you, everyone. Okay, maybe just a few quick questions. No question, but I just wanna say thanks for demonstrating how declarative Nix uh, lets you add a bunch of security features and document that you did those and see that they're working. Uh, I think that's a great use case for Nick. So thanks for showing us in person and showing that it worked. Okay. Thank nice you. Job.
All right, I'll have that one be the last question because of our schedule. Do you know of similar projects for Monero? Um, I don't know, but I think there's an XPKJS for Monero you can run, but I don't know about modules running uh, Monero. But okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's give our speaker another round of applause.